Hello everyone, how are you? I'm Luciana, this is my YouTube channel 24 horses per second and today we are finishing this underwater anemone 3D render. Ok, let's continue. For the depot field I added an empty which will be our focal object and the f-top is pretty wide at 0.2 because I wanted a shallow dip of field. Choose the location of the empty depending on where you want your focal point to be in. Change the size. And that's where my focal point is. You could put your focal point in the middle for example and that way you will have tentacles out of focus behind that focal point and in front that focal point as well. For the lighting, first I added the sun to have a base light. As for the angle and the location of the sun, it really depends on the place you want the shadows to be in. For the caustics, we need a spotlight. I'm gonna add a plane just to visualize the procedural shape we're about to make. For adding nodes to the light you need to be in cycles and we'll need a texture coordinate node, mapping, color ramp, Mix RGB, Noise Texture, Boronoi texture, duplicated, RGV curves. Duplicate it. Mix RGB. Now to animate the caustics, go to the mapping node and in the set axis of the location, 
right click and choose add driver close this pressing the x and here we're gonna write the expression frame forward slash and 310 depending on the number the caustics will go faster or slower delete this plane we don't need it anymore to visualize it correctly i recommend rendering it because this shader we created is just visible in render mode it won't be visible in material preview mode and now change the location of the spotlight i put it on the side of the camera usually side lighting makes the subject look better than putting the light in front of the subject or where the camera is and the color as well and I decided that this light won't be casting any shadows for the dust particles let's make an icosphere make a new material and leave it as it is and change the size according to the size you want the dust to be I recommend flattening the icosphere In the cube we already have the underwater effect Let's make a new particle system and set the icosphere as the instance object And now just change the settings I wanted the dust to be in the entire animation from the beginning That's why I chose that frame start, end and lifetime settings These are my final settings. As you can tell, my particles are falling, they are not floating around. To accomplish that, make a force field. Set it as turbulence. Change its location. And as for the settings, again, it depends on how fast or slow you want your particles to be.
and technically we finished this scene but let's see the render settings and tips that help me to render this scene out. Before rendering, choose a color management according to what you plan doing in post. If you are not going to edit the colors or the contrast, if you just want to render and upload, then maybe choose a standard view transform. I don't suggest not color grading or editing your renders, by the way. That's why I chose Filmic Log as my view transform setting because I already knew I wanted to tweak the colors and do the compositing in DaVinci Resolve. In this tutorial, I won't show you that color grading process. I will make a separate video for that, focus on color grading only. In this video, I will try to replicate the final look in the compositing tab in Blender after rendering. If you're going to do the compositing in Blender, you could choose Filmic. You could just choose render as animation, but that way we will be rendering everything. The anemone particles, the dust particles, the caustics. I did that at first, but not only I had some glitches in the dust particles, the other problem with rendering everything is that you have less control in the post-processing stage. If I wanted, for example, to change the opacity of the dust particles in post-production, I couldn't do it. So I left my render settings as they are here. I always render as a PNG image sequence and we don't need an alpha channel in this render. And I hit the dust particles to render the rest of the animation. And here's my render. Remember I chose Filmic Log, that's why it looks so flat, but if you're doing the compositing in Blender, you should choose a different view transform setting. For rendering the dust particles, let's disable the emitter. And we're gonna enable this toggle to prevent some objects from rendering. Disable the anemone particle system. and in the cube, delete the material. For the dust, we do need the alpha channel. Remember changing the name so we don't overwrite the anemone render. Set the background as transparent and disconnect the world color. Disable the caustics and with these settings I render only the dust particles but don't render yours yet because I have another problem. In compositing when I put the dust particles as an overlay, it looked like I had more dust than in the viewport. That's because in here I have the anemone covering the dust particles that are behind it. So what we need to do is enable it again the anemone particle system and in the material tab let's set it as holdout. Render animation and the dust particles now respect the shape of the anemone during the entire animation. Let's go to the Compositing tab. Let's open the dust and the anemone image sequences. Remember to match the number of frames in the image node and in the render settings.
an alpha over node to combine both images. Plug the image you want on top in the bottom image output. Connect the alpha or enable convert pre-multiply. Gonna make some changes so it's easier to visualize the pure node. This is my filmic log footage because I wasn't going to re-render everything in filmic or in a standard, but remember that filmic log is better for color grading softwares, not for compositing in Blender. I'm also going to open the final image I already edited in DaVinci Resolve just as reference for the simple color grading we're going to do here. Set alpha node for decreasing the opacity of the dust. A bright contrast node. A hue correct node. You could choose a different node for color grading. I won't be able to do the same grading I did in Resolve because here I don't have the qualifier I used for masking certain colors, so I could took them separately. Also, because this scene has a tint all over it, in this case it's a bluish tint, that makes it a bit harder to separate the different colors with this node. We are ready to render. We don't need the alpha, choose a file name and here you could export as an image sequence or you could just export a video file because this will be our final image. If you export as an image sequence, you will have to edit those images into a video you could do that in Blender's video editor and I have a previous video where I tried editing my render with it. And that's it for this underwater 3D scene. Hope you like the outcome. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave a comment. Stay tuned for what's next. And as always, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.